G'day Ron, welcome back to Steve's Place Down Under. Today we're going to start this G88 Volvo after it's sat here for, I don't know, two years probably, that's all. So this is a G88 Volvo, uh, it's my mate Josh's this one. It should be in a shed because it's the probably the most sought after truck down here and, and the, the best condition. It's, it, it was on the road but he got it cheap because it had a diff problem but I reckon it's just snapped the drive axle. You've got to drive with the power divider in even then it, it doesn't really drive that well. I think it had come out of here but we've only got to put it on the other side of the road so it's got a TD100 in it which is a 280 horsepower Volvo um, turbo diesel engine got a 16 speed Volvo Synchro Mesh transmission which is original and it's got uh, 38,000 pound Rockwells in it. The history of it I don't know, it was cutting grain out, out central Australia there somewhere um, but who had it new I don't know so for, for a Volvo of this age it is in exceptional condition. I have a G89 over there which is actually newer by a couple of years and it's completely rusted out got a good engine in it but the rest of it's just chassis and everything's just shot so it's sad to see it sit here but I haven't I haven't got enough shed space even for my stuff so I've actually got another one of these I got off Josh uh, it's a it's a day it's a day cab which is a slim line hasn't got the sleeper on it it's got a nine speed overdrive road ranger in it with a it's it's tandem axle at the back but it's got like a 3070 share which is a Volvo transmission but it's got a single diff at the front so two wheel drive but it's a, a six wheel prime mover it, it hasn't really been on the channel that one so what we're going to do is just going to crank it up it has been on the channel before this one back a, back a little bit actually probably 12 months that's all it's sat here it just looks because the weeds are growing up but it will be a the will it starts just basically a title and then but it still is a will it start so we'll put some batteries in it it's 24 volt with a it's got a series parallel switch which are a terrible thing in my opinion if the batteries come down a bit they just burn out and uh, the, I, I used to pay 350 for them when i first got my truck license which i'm 40 now that, that was back when i was 20 21 or something when i first put the blue kenworth on the road so I put a 12 volt starter in it and threw it in the bin and just put a series of uh, 12 volt batteries in it. That's what this needs, but it hasn't. So we're just going to go 24 volt straight to the starter so we don't burn all the gauges out of it. And all we want to do is start it up and put it over there. We can't go for a cab ride because if I, if I go off road with it anywhere, it, it'll just stop. So um, it's in fairly, fairly good condition for a Volvo, as I said, it's, <clears throat> it's all in fairly, fairly like it's it's i don't know what they had over that because the three that i've got here uh are like that there's obviously a plastic cover or something would have been over it but it's i think for a, for a volvo things that rusted rusted badly i mean they're a great truck i nearly recently bought one but my wife said no it was five grand and it was in just as good a nick as this one i was going out to get it mick and myself were going to drive her home but uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I wasn't game enough to ask for the 5,000 so it was I would have had it registered and, and been hauling with it over rather than the noisy GM and the Kenworth but anyway that it, it was the same as this with a 16 speed a lot of them were updated to road ranges because of the price to do up a synchro mesh Volvo but these two have obviously been driven right or there's no faults because they're still in there so We'll have to throw the cab over on this one and check her out, and then um, and then we'll see if she goes. Okay, so to drop the cab, um, we've got to lower the bull bar. I've had a lot of you American and Canadian blokes comment saying, talking about the, the bars we've got on the front of our trucks here in Australia. Now, we call them bull bars, mainly for our wildlife and, and stock. So they're like, out in the regional areas, you get a lot of kangaroos and cattle and, and you know, wildlife in general. You get camels even out in the centre of Australia. Just so they don't go under and hurt the front of your truck, hurt all your grill and your radiator and everything. That, that's that's what they're for to answer your, the, your comments. You, some of them some of them you pull a pin out. This is actually a really good design one. It's You, you only got to fold half of it so you're not lifting the heavy thing. A lot of them like that Mac over there, you've got to undo two bolts and pull the pull the toe pin out to fold the whole lot. But this is this is really good. 
Um, I'll just check the water while, while she's... I should have done that with it up, shouldn't I? Silly Steve. So these Volvos, the whole radiator, we say if you get a typical, you know, a, a American truck, the radiator will stay stay with the truck. Needs water. I'll put some in it. I'm gonna pass me that bolt back. A general American truck, the radiator will stay with the chassis and the engine when you roll the cab over, but these Volvos are all got flexi hoses, so the, the radiator actually tilts with the cab. Which is a good idea when you're working on it because you can get to the water pump and the fan and, and everything like that because it, it all just comes out of the way but but then those flexi hoses they tend to break a lot too so we'll get some water while she's like this and we'll throw it over and do the rest. I know I'm pouring wrong but I can't with the spout at the top I can't reach across this bull bar and hold it up. 20 litres is heavy after a while. Oh, she's full. That gets awfully heavy. 20 litres feels like 100 kilos up there. Look at this big brass cap on her. That's... I don't make stuff like that anymore. Still got the relief like your normal radiator cap inside there, but that's just magnificent. Bit of style poking out the front of her. So these come over, these would have come over from Sweden on ships. Uh, the one I've got over there come over on a, on a submarine, I think, with the amount of rust in her. All right, so we're gonna throw the cab over. And, uh, sorry, I'm out of breath for holding that up. And see if she goes. Actually, you gotta check the oil with it down too. It's a tad over full, but it's, I mean, it's laying forward, which the stick goes in the front of the engine sump on this one. Okay, we'll throw the cab over now, and um, I don't, I don't even know if we have to, to be honest. I might be able to reach in around to the starter and just give her a go. It'll probably take some uh, moving with the tractor as well to help it because of that axle problem, but I haven't looked into it. I reckon it's just a broken axle in the, in the, on one of the wheels. Okay, so I've got to set up batteries in 24 volt. Um, probably will throw the cab over just to bleed it and everything. So these have got manual locks on the cab, you pull, this is like a safety one, I've already released the other side. This is a safety one, if all else fails, that's, that's by itself, just on a hook there. And then she's on torsion bars. Last, last time I started this, it pulled the throttle cable tight and then she went to full noise when I cranked her up. So we're gonna make sure that's not the case this time. I think it is still. She should be pulling back against that spring for idle. Yeah. Okay. So she got a lift pump here. It's got a cold start button on it. A lot of you point that, say all the machines I've got have got those, and you are right, but here in Australia, a lot of blacks point them out for the Zeta, but the ones you say on the Zeta tractors haven't got it. They've maybe other models in other countries, but they haven't got it here. But this one, these Volvos have. You just give it a click and it'll it'll give it more fuel for start, and then when you hit the throttle pedal, it'll just reset it and go back to normal. Best way to bleed these inline pumps is go to the opposite end of the of the of the pump itself, so you get all the air out. Once once that head's full of, of fuel, the, the injectors will bleed themselves. So 
the, the few Volvos that I've got, I generally just crack this diaphragm here and that diaphragm is there to take a spike out of fuel pressure. Just It's just like an absorber or, a, or an accumulator basically. So if you crack that, it lets the fuel out behind it. Because it's just in the fuel system as a, you know, it sounds like it's just fuel. Primer up till she's hard and it should just fire straight up. Okay, so I've got the, there's a solid lead going from one battery straight to the starter and there's another one coming to earth, but I'll just earth it on the block. I'm going to bypass the series parallel switch. So series parallel, for those who don't know, is allows the engine to start on 24 volts, but the rest of the system, your lights, your dash and everything else are on 12. So it's just a more efficient way of starting it. But in all the trucks I've got on the road, um, the Five that I've got on the road now through club registration have all got 12 volt starters with a series of 12 volt batteries all in parallel so I'll hook this up to 24 volt so you may have heard me say three trucks before it reminded me of the the three fucking dogs that went to the vet I don't know if my wife's going to like me saying this, but there was three dogs went into the vet and uh, there was two Labradors and a Great Dane. And the two Labradors got talking. They said, what are, what are you here for? And they said, well, one one Labrador said to the other, what are you here for? He said, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a digger. He said, I dig all around the yard. He said, uh, he said, well, I dig, try even try and dig the carpet when I'm inside. So I'm here to have my nuts taken out. Hopefully that'll help me. And the other Labrador said, all right. And he said, well, what are you in for? He said, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a pisser. He said, I piss all through the lounge room. He said, I piss on everything in the yard. You know, all through the house, all up the hallway. He said, they reckon if they take my nuts out, it'll, it'll, it'll slow me down, help me. Said, oh, all right. They said, well, so they both turned around and said to the great dame, what are you here for? He said, he said, I'm a humper. He said, I, I try and root everything. He said, he said, he said, in the yard, I try and root all the plants. He said, in the house, all the furniture. He said, they let me outside. I even tried to root the telegraph pole this morning out the front. But he says, as a matter of fact, when I got back inside, he said, the, the lady of the house, she said, he just went and had a shower. She come out, she dried herself off, and she bent over to pick her clothes up. He said, I couldn't help myself. He said, uh, in I went. He said, I just couldn't help me. Just so inviting, in I went. And, and they said, well, so you're here to get your nuts out too. He said, no, I'm here to get my nails clipped. <laughs> so we're going to give her a go. My wife's not really impressed by that. I'm going to short the starter out. I'm going to get an insulated screwdriver because 24 volts can give you quite the zap if you're leaning on something. Just come around here a bit. I'm going to make sure she's out of gear. The stop is the stopper is in, so the, the I just checked it on the pump, not on the dash, but I know which way it goes on the pump. Feels like the rack's not stuck. If it is, I don't know what we're going to do. But anyway, it feels like it, so I'm just going to cross the starter and and see what she does. <laughs> Operate the throttle with that earth there. Get the pipe. There you go, listen to how quiet and smooth that is. That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You see 24 volts actually does spin them a lot better than 
put 10, 12 volt batteries in a row, you're still not going to get that same result, but it's just a lot more efficient. I'll disconnect those. Um, we'll put the cab down and see if she moves. She's got a, there's a copper washer behind that diaphragm I was talking about before, it looks like it's leaking. I'm going to leave it so I don't have to start it again because I've put all the batteries away, but that's all it's going to need, a fibre or a copper washer next time we, next time we do start it. So all I'm doing is parking it there. Uh, we go for a quick walk around, just, just ignore that. You can see the tail shaft moving now, that wouldn't happen if the diff's ring back shaft's not moving, it's, a, it's an axle in the front, ac it, it's, a, it's a drive axle in the front diff I reckon. You lock the power divider in, it'll drive the back axle, but <clears throat> of course it's 50-50 share, it, it, you know, it's, it's only got, what's the weight of the back of this, a couple of ton, it's only got, you know, a ton on, on that axle and it's trying to push the rest of it, so that's, that's why it has trouble driving, so. has got oil pressure, I looked in the cab on the dash. It's just a magnificent sounding truck, it's just so clean and tidy, it's amazing. It'd be a really good one for me to, for something like it, just to, to do those, those, those missions that I go and pick up dead tractors and stuff, rather than the old 871 rip, ripping and roaring. So I'll put the cab back down now. And, um, and see if she'll drive out of there. If not, we might need to tow with one of the tractors. All the brakes work fine. Lift it back up. Yeah, don't pull that in, hold that in. Go. Because there's no batteries in it, the solenoid for the power divider is not in, so I might just have to sit a battery there with some alligator uh, jumper leads down to the solenoid to turn the power divider on. Um, that, it's 
it was in gear, just nothing changed as you've seen that. So the, what I'm saying, the switch was out and of course there's no batteries in it unless the alternator's keeping it going, which it won't because there's nothing to excite it. There's no power to that solenoid. So I just set a little set of leads up on it. What I'm doing here, I don't know if you can see it through the weeds. There's air behind this, for those of you who don't know, then that, that's, that unit there, there's a pressure switch to tell you if it's in or out. And that's a solenoid to turn it on. So there's air, there's air here all the time from your system pressure. And when you flick that electrical current to that, which is what I was trying to do, it sends air to that and then locks that power divider in. So it's gonna leak and make a noise, but I'm just gonna hook that straight air straight to that, that diaphragm. And then we'll just have to let the system air build back up. Until we get around to fixing it, this is how it's gonna be if we wanna move it. There's 120 PSI there for full air. Eight bar, roughly.
excuse the bodgy tools I'm using. Save your comments because I don't care what you think. I'm just I'm in a bit of a hurry because I've still got to move them two other trucks because we've got something happening on the paddock this week and I, I need them all gone. You wouldn't think I'd do this every day for a living, would you? I don't, I'm not this bodgy at work, it's just we're having a couple of beers and trying to move it. And we're having to walk to and from the toolbox. This is what a lot of you would do anyway, if you weren't being videoed. Rather than going and get a 9 16th and 11 16th, I just put up with the with the, uh, the bodgy tools. So that's completely bypassed. Now once that builds up, that shaft will stop. Well, I hope it does. Maybe it was working. There might be a problem in the power divider. There she goes. She stopped. That means one of them axles is now live. It's in neutral. That's just a drag. Because it's a synchro mesh transmission, there's drag on all the synchros. So that's leaking out of that rusty hose clamp there. No, small world problems. Let's see if she moves now. Let the system air build back up and see if she goes. Okay everyone, that's going to do the Volvo. We spent, I don't know, an hour and a half trying to get the middle axle. The brakes are just locked on solid. I've got the back axle driving, but the middle axle just won't come off. You can see all the stuff that's built up behind it from trying to push it with the excavator and free everything up. It's just, 
this all this stuff's got to be off this paddock this weekend so we're going to go to the other episode now i'm just going to move it like those other trucks like we like we did some of these with the forklift and just on the front axle we're going to leave it running just so someone can steer it with the power steering um so thank you all to the patreon members thanks to the people that subscribe please click the like button we'll see you on the next episode